Hey, hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Data Master. In this video, I'm going to explain you about how to access the external data lake using storage credential and external location. So for this, you need to enable Unity Catalog for your Databricks workspace. So I have already made a videos on what is Unity Catalog, how you can enable Unity Catalog to your Azure Databricks workspace. And now I'm assuming that you already have a knowledge of Unity Catalog. So in simple words, Unity Catalog is a complete data governance solution developed by Databricks. With Unity Catalog, you get a complete data access control. You can get a audit history of that and also you get a data lineage and a data discoverability becomes very easy when you enable Unity Catalog. I have already enabled Unity Catalog for this workspace and I have few catalogs here. So whenever you create a Unity Catalog, we get one meta store. Under that meta store, we create catalogs and in that catalogs, we create schemas. Let me show you here. Yeah, we create schemas and within that schemas, we have objects. Now, with every Unity Catalog, you get one storage account associated to that. So you can see here, by default, we have one storage account that is associated. What is storage credential and what is external location? I'll explain that. So with every Unity Catalog or with every Meta Store, you get one storage, dedicated storage account that is for Unity Catalog. So apart from that, if you have some external data lake, how do we connect that? I'm going to explain that. You are going to connect it using storage credential and external location. Let me show you this image here. So I'm talking about Meta Store. And if you want to connect some external data lake, then you can do it by using storage credential and external location. So what do you mean by storage credential? So it's a credential object that you can create within Unity Catalog. So it serves as an authentication or authorization mechanism for accessing the data stored in your data lake. And what is external location? It is an object that combines your storage credential with a cloud object storage. In simple words, I would say that storage credential is just creating a connection to your external data lake and your external location is nothing but it's creating a path. So it is a wrapper of your storage credential. So in a traditional, when we used to use a Hive Meta Store, a legacy one now, we used to use a mount point. Then we used to use a service principle or SAS token or access key to mount your external storage. But now in case of Unity Catalog, you just need to create a storage credential that will help you to access your external data. So now let me show you. I have one of the storage account that's already associated with the Unity Catalog and the storage account name is SANLY. I have created a new storage account here called SA Data Master as a storage account name. And I have created one container called raw. In that container, I have a bronze directory and I have some folders here. So we do not have any connection. I mean, this storage account does not have any connection with the Unity Catalog. I'm going to create a connection now. So you don't need to use a mount point now if you are enabled Unity Catalog in your workspace. Now you can just go to Catalog Explorer and click on external data. And here you can go to storage credentials. So already one storage credential is already created when we enable Unity Catalog. Let me create a new one. Let me hit on create credential. So it will ask you for storage credential name. So what name you prefer and it is asking you access connector ID. So it's always a good practice to keep a new access connector. Now what I'll do, I'll go back to your Azure account and here I'll start creating an access connector. So access connector for Azure Databricks. Let me click on it. I already have an access connector. So let me create one more for external data lake. So this was for a Unity Catalog Meta Store. All the metadata 
will be stored in that ADLS by using this access connector. But let me create a new access connector and I'll put it in my project group. I'll give a name called access for external data lake or external data. Okay, for external data lake. Okay. I'll keep it in East US region. Let me just click on review and create. It will take a couple of seconds. Let me hit create. We just need a we just need a access connector ID. But but try to understand we are accessing your data lake. I mean we are accessing your ad external data lake via this access connector. So we need to give an access to this access connector first. Okay. So let me yeah, let me go to this resource. Yeah. Now we got a resource ID here, but first we need to give an access i mean your adls account should give an access to this access connector so let me do that first just remember the access connector name let me go back and let me go back to this storage account so this is my external storage account here i'm going to give an access so click on access control and let me add a role assignment i'll give a storage contributor role so let me go here and check storage contributor role storage account contributor or uh, no let me give you a blob data contributor yeah blob data contributor that helps us me to read write delete access and all those things let me click on next and here let me click on select member and here i'll give a name for that access connector the name for access connector is access for external data lake that was my access connector I, uh, name and let me click on select so i am giving a role called blob contributor to this access connector let me click on review and assign and it's almost done now so once we have given that role yeah it's done now so let me go back i would take a access connector id from here let me take a access connector ID and go back to your storage uh, Databricks workspace and just paste your access connector ID. And you need to give a name for this credential name. So I'll just give it like storage account for data master. I'm just giving it with the help of uh, the same name what I have for my storage account. Okay. So you can give any name. So for best practice, I'll keep it as a storage account name and let me hit create now let me hit create so this will help you to create a connection to your storage account okay this is your storage account you can see here let me click on storage account you can see two storage accounts and there are two ways to connect it by using a manage identity and service principle uh, what databricks recommends you to go with manage identity and i kept it as manage identity only let me get inside this so you can see you uh, I am the owner of this. You can change the owner. You can give it to a specific group. Keeping it to a group is a good practice. You can keep a comment. You can see the managed credential. Uh, that credential type is managed identity. Okay. So now I am going to create a external location. Okay. External location is just like a path. But before that, let me start my. Let me start the compute, guys, because I want to show you the test. Okay. I started my cluster, guys. Now let me go back. It will take two, three minutes to spin that. Once I created a storage credentials, let me create an external location. Let me hit on this and let me create a location now. And it is asking you the external location name. So again, I'll use a raw and then I'll use a storage account name. So let me write it like SA data master. You can give any name. And now it is asking you to pick the storage credential so if you remember this was our storage credential and i want to create a link for that once i click on it it is asking me the url so url it will always start with a driver called abfss so how to get this url so i'll just show you i'll go back to my storage account here i'll get inside my container 
and inside a container i'll just pick up the path here uh, let me get inside a container for directory i will get a path and see uh, let me go to properties mm, just a minute guys let me check where i'll get a path I got this URL. Let me copy this. But this is specific to one file. But we'll give it for the entire directory called a bronze or maybe for a raw container. So I'll just go back here. I'll paste it here. Okay. Obviously, I need to change that. So I'll change it. ABFSS put a colon slash container name. My container name is raw at the rate data uh, SA data master is my storage account name. You can see here. And then dot dfs so instead of blob we need to use dot dfs core dot windows dot net and i don't need to give any specific path now okay so i'll just put a slash and that's it because i want to give for the entire container i'll just paste it here i'll just remove the comment from here and just hit create and the moment i click on create you got your external location created so we are just connecting or we are just making an access to the external data lakes without unity catalog we used to mount it but now you don't need to create any mount just use storage credential and external location and that's it let me go to my notebook recent notebook unity catalog and here let me show you whether it is mounted or not yeah my cluster is up and running now so let me use a D utilities guys db utils dot fs dot ls and let me paste this path okay so i'll use the same path here and then run this yeah you can see you got your output so i can see this is my path in that we have one directory called browns i can access all so if you want to if you don't want to put that in a list you can just take this all and put it in display and you would see the output in a HTML neat table format. Let me show that. And it's done here. You can see that. So if you want to just get inside a bronze, let me get inside a bronze. I can see there are two tables there. One is or two uh, files there. One is JSON and one is orders. And you can see it here. So this is how we can access external data lake using storage credential and external location but for this you need a unity catalog enabled for your workspace now you don't need to mount it like service principle or using service principle or sas token or access key i hope you found this video useful guys thank you for watching if you like the content please like the video please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and colleagues thank you once again see you in the next video